Hi, thank you for joining me. This is Dr. Caruso. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create an e-learning tutorial with a graphical user interface in Google Slides. Let's head on over to Google Slides to get started. I've logged into my email account and under the menu here, I'm going to select Slides. And rather than pick a template, I'm going to select Start a New Presentation with a blank slide. Now I've already decided on some things for this interactive tutorial, this e-learning course, and I've decided that I am going to include some information about the course. I'm going to include a piece on how to navigate this training. I'm going to include my contact information, some frequently asked questions, and I'm going to have three modules, a review, and then a quiz. And all of this is going to be created for my client, Rosie's Restaurant. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create some placeholder slides for my content. So this first slide that I'm going to create is going to be called about this course. I'm going to create one that says navigation. And I'm going to create a slide for every piece of information that I would like to include in this e-learning course. So as you can see here, I have quite a few slides in my presentation so far with all of the content that I intend to include. This is going to be for a client, Rosie's Restaurant, and the topic of this training is wait staff etiquette and I intend on having three modules. So here on this very first slide, I'm going to start to build uh, my title page, which is also going to serve as a graphical user interface. A graphical user interface will allow the learners to maneuver or navigate through this tutorial at a self-paced basis. So they would be able to choose, instead of viewing it as a presentation from one slide to the next, this will allow them to have sections and let them go to various sections depending on which point of the training they would like to engage in. Or let's say that they didn't finish a part of the training the day before and they would like to pick up where they left off. This is going to allow them to do that very easily. So I'm just going to change the layout of this first slide because I want it to be completely blank. And I'm going to begin building some tabs that are going to represent uh, the pieces for my graphical user interface. I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to start inserting some shapes and I like these trapezoid shapes here. Because it kind of looks like a tab and I like uh, the look and feel to kind of make it look like tabs in a binder. I'm going to start drawing these across the top. It defaults in a blue color, but I'm going to change its color uh, to keep uh, a theme going here. So my client has certain colors that she uses for her restaurant. Her name is Rosie, so she likes to use red. So I'm going to give this a fill color of red. I'm also going to open the format options and those will appear here to the right and I'm going to look at reflection and I can make this a little bit more transparent I can make it have a shadow effect a drop shadow
I can change its position. I can work on situating the text if I would like. For now, I like the way it has this little effect here because it actually gives it some dimension and makes it look like a real tab. So since I'm happy with this, I know that I need four more of these across the top here. So I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to copy. And then I'm going to do a right click again and I'm going to paste. Control V on your keyboard may work for you as well. And I have the four that I want. I'm going to situate these across the top. That little snap to red line that you see is going to help me position them. Do a little overlap if you would like. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to give these a name. The first one is going to be about this course. The second one is going to be navigation. The third one is going to be contact. And the fourth one is going to be my frequently asked questions. And then again, you can center the text as you would like. center these in the middle of the tab here. There we have it. And each of these tabs is going to correspond to the pages that I have built. So we're going to do this by building what we call hyperlinks. So I'm going to go ahead and this first one about this course, I'm going to click on it so that the entire shape is highlighted rather than just highlighting the text that's inside. Because if you're inside the box, the hyperlink is going to apply to whatever you've highlighted inside the box. It's better though if you have the hyperlink apply to the entire shape so that eventually uh, when this is in presentation mode, you will see that the learner can hover anywhere over this tab to activate that hyperlink. So here we go. Um, I have the entire shape of the About This Course tab highlighted. I'm going to go to Insert, and the thing that I am going to insert is a link. And I wanted to link it to a slide in this presentation and the one that I want it to link to is the slide that's called About This Course. So that is the hyperlink, and I'm going to say Apply. I'm going to do the same for this Navigation tab. I'm going to go to Insert. The thing I'm going to insert is a link. I'm going to link to a slide in this presentation, and this time I'm going to link to the Navigation slide and Apply. I'm going to do the same for contact and FAQ. Along the left hand slide here is where I've decided to put the links to my modules, the review and the quiz. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a shape. I'm going to choose a shape. This time I'm going to choose this rounded rectangle here. And I know that I need five of these across the left hand side. So once I get it to the look and feel that I would like, then I can go ahead and copy them. I'm going to stick with the spread. I am going to apply an effect to it. So I'm going to format. Look at my format options. I'm going to do this drop shadow again. I chose a red color for my drop shadow here, and I just used some of these settings to get it to where I wanted it. When I'm happy with that, since I need five of these, 
I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste four more and I'm going to arrange them across the side using my stack to guide for help and spacing. And then I'm going to name them. You know I have built previously all of these pages and these are going to correspond to the pages that I have built. So I already have these pages built in my presentation and the first one is going to be my module one and it's going to talk about a positive attitude and I'm going to name these remaining tabs. So you can see here that I have my tabs all named and previously I have created a page that is going to correspond to each of these links. So I'm going to go ahead and build my links. So, so the first one is module one. I'm going to insert link to this presentation. Just scrolling for module one and applying that link. I'm going to do the same thing for module two, module three, the review and the quiz. When I went to insert the hyperlink for the quiz, because it's so near to the bottom of the page, what I had to do because this menu did not let me sh let me see the quiz option, I had to kind of temporarily move this whole tab, then go to insert link slide in this presentation so that I could see my whole menu options. Sometimes that happens if you're at the very bottom of your page. So this is quiz and I'm going to link it there. But then I'm going to move it back here now that it's all set. When I built these links I was very careful to select the entire shape rather than click inside because remember if you click inside the hyperlink is going to apply to the words inside the box rather than the entire box. So I have a corresponding page linked to each of these tabs and if I put this in presentation I'm just going to click on present to see how everything is looking I can see, for example, uh, that if I hover over these tabs, that I get a little hand that seems to be pointing upward with the index finger. This is an indication that you have correctly built in your hyperlinks, rather than having just an arrow sign. If I click on module three, for example, it takes me directly to module three. Now it's a pretty blank page because I haven't completely populated but that will be next. But what is missing is a way to get back to the graphical in user interface or get back to one of the other modules. So our next step is to build in more navigation. And because this time we want a home button and perhaps a next slide and a previous slide navigation button to appear on every slide in our show or in our presentation, we, will, we want to use the slide master for this next step. So we are going to go to view and we're going to view the master. And when we do that, it looks like our entire show has disappeared, but I can assure you it has not. We can see here hints of what our show really looks like, but the master looks a little different. And one thing to be aware of is you need to use the slide bar to slide all the way up to the largest slide in this master view. And the reason being we're going to work with this slide and from now on, any slide that you add to your show will have the, the shapes that you are creating here will appear on every single slide, even if you insert the slides at a later time. So the things that we would want to include here, I'm just going to go up to insert. 
and I'm going to go to shape and we would always want the learner to be able to continue in the tutorial or in the e-learning tutorial so we are going to allow the learner to continue so we're going to add an arrow that looks like this and if I want to keep my theme I can make this fill with red and I'm going to assign a link to it so I'm going to say insert link a slide in this presentation and I want the learner to when the learner clicks on this arrow that it goes to the next slide so I'm going to apply that action I also want the learner to be able to come to the home page or to that graphical user interface. So here you could insert a shape and any of these shapes you could act, make them hyperlink to the graphical user interface. So if you find something here or you could search the web for an image that you would like. So I'm just going to search for an animated rose because this is Rosie's restaurant and a rose is her signature and I'm going to see what kind of results I get. So I can choose one of these. And I think I'm going to just for purposes of this demonstration choose this one. And I go ahead and say insert. It inserts into the show very largely, so I'm going to have to scale it down. I'm going to put this here. Well, I'm going to put it here for now because I know that menu is kind of hard to get to. So I'm going to go to insert. And the thing I'm going to insert is a link within this presentation and I always want it to go to the first slide. So the first slide in my show is that graphical user interface. So I'm going to say slide one, apply, and then I can reposition this here. Then I'm going to put my presentation into the present mode so that you can see the difference now and here at the bottom you can see the two tabs that have been added and across the top here the same pages are still existing here so this time let's say if I go to module 3 not very much happening there because I have not populated the content but this time if I wanted to go to the next slide I could click the arrow and it will take me to the next slide if I wanted to go back to the graphical user interface I could click on the rows and it will take me right back here to my main menu so now the learner has the ability to navigate to any of these sections within the tutorial or the e-learning tutorial and also to choose to continue or choose to go back home at any point. So we will let the learner know what these two symbols mean because we're going to include how to navigate and we will be populating all of these different sections in the show. But before we do that we're going to give a little bit of character to this first page. So we're going to add an image and we're also going to add a name. So I'm back in edit mode. I'm on my graphical user interface. This time I want to insert a text box because the name of my training is going to be Waitstaff Etiquette. Fold that I'm going to make it larger and I'm going to include an image here now I have some images saved on my computer that I would like to use 
uh, you have the option of inserting an image from your computer or searching on the web. I have some that I would like to upload from my computer, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I've located where the picture that I want to use is, is on my flash drive, and I'm just going to double click that, and it comes right inside here. So I, I want to make sure that it's not covering any of my other elements. So my next order of business is to begin populating the various parts of this e-learning tutorial. So I'm going to start with about this course. And as you can see, I've populated several of these slides. About this course now tells the learners what exactly what they are going to learn in this tutorial. I've even added Rosie's picture, uh, just like I did on the graphical user interface to kind of reinforce that branding. On navigation, I'm letting the learners know what these two symbols at the bottom of the slides will mean and what their function is. Contact information, I've included some contact for Rosie's Restaurant, just in case the learner would have some questions about this e-learning. And I've started populating the frequently asked questions section, uh, uh, just things about Rosie's Restaurant, but you could also anticipate some of the questions that a learner might have about the tutorial itself. And so now I'm ready uh, to start actually populating my modules. So this entails what an instructional designer would do for each of these skills that are going to be taught within this tutorial. So for positive attitude right now, this module is blank and I want this first page to act as the landing page for the module. So rather than dive into the module, when the learner is on the graphical user interface and clicks module one, uh, they will land here on this first page. So I kind of want them to get an introduction to this module. So I think I'm going to insert an image. I'm gonna search the web for the image. And I'm just going to see what positive attitude will return. Maybe a positive attitude quotes. Or just let's see what positive attitude will return. insert this image here and I can add some text here in this module you will learn the importance of developing and maintaining a positive attitude and we'll just leave it at that if you'd like to um, increase the size of the text box decrease the size increase the font however you would like this to appear that is up to you but remember images with words is better than just images alone so then uh, we always want to tell the learner what to do next uh, so this arrow they've already become very familiar with what the arrow does but if you want to reinforce that habit uh, you can add a text box and just instruct them something like click the next arrow to begin the module 
want to make sure that they're moving through the module the way you intended for them to move through the module. So little instructions, little reminders here and there are a good thing to do. So then you would actually start building the content of your module. So I've added some text here and I've also added a drop shadow effect and just reminding the wait staff, don't be grumpy. Customers always remember the service they were provided. So that's kind of reinforcing what we're trying to promote here is a positive attitude. And along with that, I am going to search for an image. Grumpy waiter. Let's see what that returns. Actually like this picture because it's promoting uh, the concept that we are trying to relay here, which is don't be grumpy. So this actually is a waiter who's very happy and he's smiling. So I'm gonna add this picture here. And there should be uh, several pieces of content under each module. So on this second slide here, well actually in between here, I'm going to insert a new slide. And when I do so, you can see that automatically these two icons are added because I have created them in the master. So this is still module one, positive attitude. And I'm going to continue. And this time I think I'm going to add a different element. Uh, here I'm going to say, This video will provide you with some tips to maintaining a positive attitude. And if you would like to uh, give some format options here, you can do that drop shadow again. You can do some reflection, however you would like this to appear. Also, you have some choices here about the size and the style of the font. So then I'm going to insert a video. I'm going to find a video that promotes positive attitude. So I'm going to go to insert and this time I'm going to insert video. I'm going to search YouTube for a video. And the trick here is to select a, a video that is very relevant to what you are trying to relay and also one that is not too long. So I would say something that is five minutes or less. Also, a word of caution is to watch the video from start to finish just to make sure that there are, are no surprise content for you. So I'm gonna look for a video and then I'm gonna go ahead and insert it. So I found a video that I liked. I watched it from start to finish. The problem is it's a bit long. It's 10 minutes and 57 seconds, but I really like uh, what is said in the middle of the video. So I can choose to start the video at a certain point and end the video at a per certain point so that the video still remains about five minutes or less uh, to really engage the learners. So just to show you this, how this might look, I'm going to click here. I know that this is one minute, 42 seconds. That's where I would want it to start. And let's say I would want it to end at the eight minute mark. We just uh, designate the start and end times. If you want the video in its entirety, then you would leave these alone. You wouldn't adjust them. You could also choose to autoplay when you are presenting. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. That way it will just start to play when the learner hits this page. 
You could also choose the position, things like that. For now, I'm gonna leave these in their default. So this is going to give them more content on building that positive attitude. And then I would probably, if I'm finished with that module, then I would want to start uh, building my module two. And I notice I got ahead of myself just a little bit because this is my landing page for module one. Uh, this is actually right now my module two, but I want it to be my continuation of module one. So this is also a positive attitude. And it's just gonna be a teachable moment because I'll show you what I need to adjust. And then this is still module one. And then I actually have to build in a slide here for module two. My module two is served to the left. So since I've made some adjustments, uh, my hyperlinks are going to be a bit incorrect. So I'm going to use this as a teachable moment. I'm going to go back to the graphical user interface and I am going to make sure that this link goes to the first page of module one and it does. And this link, module two, is still designated to module one because I made that adjustment. So I am going to have to edit the link. And I actually want this to go to module two, which is served to the left. So I'm going to apply that change there. So that was my mistake because I just mixed up these slides a bit. But now I am ready to start populating module two. And I'm just gonna start by letting the learner know what they're going to be learning in this module. In this module, you will learn the proper way to change cutlery, lay down food, and serve drinks. And since pictures and text are better than text alone, I make this a little bit bigger here. Kind of keep it in in sync with the other module, how the uh, beginning of the other module looked. I'm gonna raise this a little bit to the 24 as well. So everything looks very uniform. And I'm gonna add a picture. And I'm gonna add this image from the web. Just look for a server who's serving food. Choose this one. Go ahead and insert. And then I can be begin uh, with a couple of slides for module two. So I'm just going to add a slide. Couple of slides maybe and this will be module two and I will go ahead and begin populating some content for that module as well as module three, which is clearing the table. So I've added some content to module two 
added some indicators to reflect and show the learners just exactly what I'm trying to show them in this picture. Found a video that is uh, relevant to teaching the skill of serving to the left. Then began this module three and taught some things about clearing the table. Used call outs to remind the learners what they should say in these situations. And then did a little review of the main things that were learned throughout this tutorial. So we can put it in present to see how everything is looking. I'm going to start with the home page about this course. Kind of scroll through here to make sure everything's working. Make sure that these hyperlinks go to the correct modules. And everything's looking good. I'm going to go back to this uh, home page. Uh, the learners might be confused here because there are a lot of options here, but it, there's no really clear direction on where the learner should start. So I'm going to add something here. Uh, so I'm going to add an indicator. So it's called a signal. So you need to signal the learner what to do on the various slides. And it's very important to let them know where to start. So I'm going to insert a text box. And it's going to say, click about this course. Begin. Or uh, if you want to call this a tutorial, that's fine. Then you would say about this tutorial to begin. And I'm going to add an arrow. And I'm just going to draw the arrow here, signaling that the learner should click here to begin. You could also give the learner, um, let the learner know who is who this tutorial is by. So if you would want to give yourself some credit, you would add another text box. Uh, might be a good idea also to let the learner know that this is an audio enhanced tutorial so that they need speakers and a headset. So if you'd like to add that as well, you could add a text box here with any instructions about this tutorial that you would want them to have. And now let's see how this is all looking. We're going to go to present. It's clear where they should begin. Um, clear how they should navigate. All the hyperlinks are intact and they're working. So this might be your stopping point. Um, I've added a link here to a quiz because in a future tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add on a quiz uh, to make sure that the learner has learned the content. But if you're finished with this, uh, there are several things you can do. Uh, the first thing I would want to do is give this a name. I'm going to call it Waitstaff Etiquette. It's going to be saved in my drive. If I would like to share it, there are some sharing options. So I can get a shareable link. I can enter the email addresses of everyone that I wanted to share this with. Or I can make it public so it is available on the web. So with a link, anyone can have access to it or these special designations here. Or if you are going to be inserting this into a blog or into a website, you can say file, publish to the web, either get the link or the embed code. If you would like to get the embed code, you would click on embed I received a message that says, are you sure you want to publish this selection? And I am going to say, okay. 
And what happens then is it generates the embed code. And this embed code can be inserted into a blog, perhaps, uh, if you're a student and you are giving this as an assignment into a learning management system. You could also use the embed code that way. Or if you're building a website, this is uh, the embed code that you can use. Uh, so in a future visit video, I am going to show you how to build a quiz for this same tutorial. And we're just going to tack it on here. And then when all is said and done, I will show you how to use that embed code and insert it into a website. Once again, this is Dr. Shirley J. Caruso. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial on how to create an e-learning tutorial with a graphical user interface in Google Slides. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel.